Hello and welcome back. Uh, last time we created a image, uh, the CentOS 7 image. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually make a gold image or a sealed image is what they're called. And this will become our new template for a CentOS 7 system that we want to create. So first thing we want to do is we want to get the IP address of it. And then we can connect to it with a client or SSH client called PuTTY um, to do the things. Or you can do it from the console window. I prefer PuTTY. It's just a little bit uh, you know, easier and you're not within Windows and stuff like that but you can do it within the console window if you would like. Um, so first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to log in. Uh, once we're logged in uh, we're going to just get the IP address and then once we have the IP address then we can use our SSH client to connect to it. Uh, you'll be briefed with a box very similar to what you see and we're logged in all right we are ready to go through the steps first we're going to do a yum update what this will do is this will get the latest and greatest packages um, from the repos that are uh, controlled or uh, set up by CentOS Uh, we've got uh, 86 packages to be upgraded and one package to be installed. Uh, we'll say yes to this. This is importing the keys um, for this uh, repo, so we'll say yes to that. Now it's just running a, uh, a check to make sure everything will work. And now it's updating. All right, it's been in, it's been completed. Uh, all the packs have been updated. The kernel's been updated as well. Uh, a reboot will have to happen before the new kernel is be is put into place. Um, but before we do that, we can do a couple more steps and then reboot. Uh, the steps that we're going to do are we're going to uh, disable the SE Linux uh, to see what the state is. We just type in SE. Uh, status and we can see that it's enabled and enforcing what we want to do is we want to disable that and we do that with a quick uh, sed line now you can see in the uh, config file now it says that it's a uh, mode from config file is disabled Whereas before it said that it was actually enforcing. So the next time we reboot, uh, we'll have the new kernel and we'll have the SE Linux uh, disabled. Uh, so before we go any further, we might as well reboot. And when we reboot, since we're in SSH using PuTTY, we can actually see in the background uh, the VM actually uh, rebooting. So we'll say reboot. Minimize this and we can see it rebooting in the background. Okay, it's been rebooted. Uh, now we can go back to our SSH, and from here we're actually going to say uh, restart session. Okay, from the restart session, we'll log in with the root and the same password. Hit clear just to clear this up. Here we're going to verify that the uh, SE Linux has been disabled, the SE status, so that looks good. Next, we're going to install the tools, uh, guest tools for Zen. Uh, if you're using VMware, there'll also be some uh, VMware tools that you can install as well. Uh, since this is for Zen, we're going to do the uh, installation of the Zen tools there. Uh, so what you do there is you uh, right click your VM and there's also install Zen t server tools. Uh, all that does is it puts those onto your system. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a make directory slash mount slash tools and then we're going to mount the CD-ROM to that mount point okay now that we've got the uh, directory there and we've mounted the CD-ROM to the tools we should be able to go into the tools directory do a list and we can see that there are uh, the files that are actually from that ISO the guest tools ISO. We'll change directories into Linux. And then from here we'll actually run install. 
sh and it tells you what's going on it's going to be installing uh, these tools it's going to update different things it's going to install the guest utilities and the Zen store so we'll say yes to continue and now it says that we should reboot this VM so we will reboot the reason why we, we rebooted after we did the upgrade and the uh, SE Linux is you have to reboot after you make a change to SE Linux but also the uh, kernel needed to be the newest one and I didn't want to install the tools on an old kernel so that's why I did the tools after that um, so now that it's been up after this we'll double make sure that we've got the uh, latest and greatest uh, uh, update and also make sure that SE Linux is still disabled and then we'll also check to make sure that uh, uh, everything else is there so let's uh, go back to our SSH go back to our putty and we'll restart session log as root password that we used I'm just going to type clear just to clear this so it's, it's a lot cleaner uh, we're going to verify the, the version 7.2 that's good we're going to check the status disabled so that's good we've got the tools installed now it's time to disable the firewall okay. it's been stopped now we're actually going to disable the firewall uh, this is just to make things easier for a lab environment wouldn't recommend this really in a, a production you would need to make sure that the specific ports are open uh, for that okay next we're going to stop the our syslog Also stop the audit daemon. Okay, next what we're going to need to do is actually, uh, it doesn't need to be done, but I like to get rid of all of the different uh, older kernels and stuff like that that are on the system. Uh, so in order to do that, we actually need to install a tool um, or utilities called yum utils. Um, so we'll install that. Okay, those tools have been installed. I'm just going to clear the screen again to make it a little bit easier. Okay, to see what kernels are currently on there, we can do a rpm q kernel, and it shows that we've got two kernels. So what we'll do is we'll remove everything except for the latest and greatest, and we'll get rid of the oldest one. So now we're only down to one kernel, which is the latest and greatest. Next, we'll get rid of the yum repositories by cleaning all those. So everything's cleaned up there. Um, now we're going to get rid of some logs. We need to check our network interface. If it has a hardware address, we want to remove that also want to remove the UUID as well. Make sure that the boot proto is DHCP. Last but not least we want to unconfigure. And last but not least, power off. Uh, once we power it off, then we'll actually create it into a template. Ready to be turned into a template. Uh, what we need to do here is from the Zen Center, right click the server that we want or VM, and say convert to template. Once this is done, it cannot be reverted back, at least in Zen Center. Select convert and template has been created.